In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Episcopal Church, in our appointed feast days, actually remembers the brilliant Roman Catholic theologian Thomas Aquinas. On January the 28th, we observe his feast day this afternoon. When Aquinas lived in the 13th century, The Church of England was still a part of the Western Catholic Church centered in Rome. And I enjoy remembering Thomas because I actually like philosophy, and I like the particulars of philosophy. I like the philosophers who focus on the particulars, like the great American philosopher Charles Schultz, creator and illustrator of the Peanuts cartoon, who put into the mouth of Lucy, the psychiatrist, one day these words, I love humankind. It's people I can't stand. With Aquinas, with Aquinas, I remember the old philosophical conversation between universals and particulars. One classical branch of philosophy starts its study with universals. Another branch starts its study with particulars. A person who studies universals studies the properties of things common characteristics of individual things, classes of things. For them, these universal titles are real. On the other hand, a person who studies particulars starts with the things themselves, giving the object or subject its own attention before assigning it to some category. For them, only the particulars are truly real, not universal categories. This is a simplification, of course, but the complicated difference plays a large role in the history of Western philosophy and theology. Plato started with universals. Aristotle started with particulars. And for a thousand years, the Christian church used the work of Plato to form its theology. It was today's saint, Thomas Aquinas, who brought Aristotle back to the attention of philosophy and theology. Aquinas taught us to pay attention to particulars again. Of course, he did much more. He was able to interpret both Plato and Aristotle together, able to combine faith and reason in edifying and faithful ways. And he developed even more great definitions of the existence of God. God as first mover, for instance. There is a God, he claimed, because something must have begun this energy, this motion in the world. Aquinas focused on being, too. We are contingent beings, he said, implying that there has to have been being before us who is God. Today it's enough to point out his attention to real and physical things, the particulars in life, 
not the lofty universals that escape us. Aquinas brought philosophical attention back to flesh itself, like Aristotle had done, like a good scientist does. The other simplistic example I give is of music. A person who starts with universals says something like, I like music. A person who starts with particulars says, I like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Aquinas taught us to pay attention to particulars, and it is through particulars that we might grasp something universal. Amidst his profound theology, Aquinas wrote texts for hymns. He wrote two famous texts for the Feast of Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. One of those hymns we will sing later in this service. Another one that we often sing at communion is humbly I adore thee. And so I close this meditation by reciting that text, or at least the four stanzas of it we sing as a hymn. The opening stanza translates, Humbly I adore thee, verity unseen, whom thou glory hidest neath these shadows mean. He's noting a particular that shows us a universal. And the hymn reminds us that Eucharistic devotion pays attention to particulars. Listen to these four stanzas and how Thomas Aquinas focuses his adoration on the Eucharist itself the living bread. For him, it is a particular that opens his spirit to the life of God. Here is the hymn. Humbly I adore thee, verity unseen, who thy glory hidest neath these shadows mean. Lo, to thee surrendered my whole heart is bowed, tranced as it beholds thee, shrined within the cloud. Taste and touch and vision to discern thee fail. Faith that comes by hearing pierces through the veil. I believe whate'er the Son of God hath told what the truth hath spoken, that for truth I hold. O memorial wondrous of the Lord's own death, living bread that givest all thy creatures breath, grant my spirit ever by thy life may live. To my taste, thy sweetness never failing give. Jesus, whom now hidden, I by faith behold. What my soul doth long for, that thy word foretold. Face to face, thy splendor, I at last shall see in the glorious vision, blessed Lord, of Thee. Thank you, St. Thomas Aquinas. Amen.